Okay, so just got the microwave here and read the instructions last night. Took this um, piece off. This gets screwed onto the wall and then the microwave hooks onto this, these hooks on the back here. And then uh, the microwave came with this uh, paper template. So there's the rear wall template. And uh, that's the where that metal bar goes. And I made sure that I put a two by six, kind of going this direction between the studs, uh, so that I would have um, full um, support for the microwave. In addition to that, I already drilled the three holes that go for the front, uh, top down into the microwave and support with this uh, cabinet here. And I need to drill a two inch hole for the power cord. And then I need to put this uh, outlet on uh, for the microwave outlet. So that's up next. And as you can imagine, the layout is pretty important. Now they supplied this top cabinet template, which was actually supposed to be taped underneath here and then drilling from above, but or drilling from below, that would be more difficult. So I transferred all of the measurements in addition uh, it's got all the Benjamins. So, for example, this hole we're going to drill here it says it's four and a quarter center and six and a quarter from there. So, I just took off the half inch for the back of the cabinet. So, that's three and three quarters uh, to the center and six and a quarter to the center. So, uh, just be careful in transferring and measuring. I gotta get a vacuum and clean this up. Of course, the other thing I did here with this rear wall template was make sure that when I put it across the top of this line here that we were level. And then I used my punch to uh, punch a hole. You only need to have, they say in the instructions, one uh, screw into a stud and the other one can be an anchor bolt into a hollow. But like I said, I've got uh, the 2x6 back there for blocking. So here's the hardware kit. And it comes with these longer bolts which come through the cabinet up top through those three holes on the top of the cabinet. And these will come down and screw into the microwave towards the front top.
Okay, so the outlet's in, plugged in. Saw that hole. Got the. I did have to redrill a couple of these. I don't know. This one worked over here. Uh, that one and that one I had to. This one probably would have worked. Uh, anyway, it's never simple and easy. Okay, just a matter of uh, getting the time set on there, and I need to get all the other uh, filters and other things in there, so, but that's it. Uh, next up will be the range, and I have to put this cord on here. Okay, it's all wired up. Just need to tighten down this string relief for the cord. There's two screws down here. And uh, then I can put the electrical plate back on, uh, screw that on, and plug it in. And uh, I've already leveled the feet. It's got four feet. And... So that was another part of the process, leveling the feet so that the stove is level. So I've decided to position these uh, three inches back in the center. So I just make a small line. Uh, and there's a couple of screws that screw on the holder for the LED. And I pre-drill these. There's a little hole here for the wire to come out. It's not super critical. I usually direct the wire that cut out towards the wire here. The key is not to drill more than a half inch of the 
depth of the bottom of this cabinet. Not the end of the world if you do, it's just no reason to have a hole in the bottom of your cabinet. And this thing comes with a lot more wire than needed. In this case, other cabinets, I need longer wire, so it's good that it comes with it enough to use. There's a little sticker here that says, don't push on the center of the light. And then I determine right here. So now, I need to take a look at this with this light. There's one with ribs, and that's the, uh, in this case, the red wire, and the black wire goes into the one that doesn't have the ribs. do a tub test and that's it so I'm gonna do the last two hook up my power converter and then test these before I do my cable management and get these wires out of the way all right I've got the uh, 12 volt transformer and I got the wires that uh, were in the wall from the previous installation right here uh, so that's 12 volt DC going out on those low voltage wires uh, I've got this lower one right here that if I want to expand and maybe put some lights in the toe kick uh, I still need a cover plate to go over that and I need to put a cover plate on the uh, dishwasher and disposal this has got the uh, Two power lines coming into two separate circuits, one for the dishwasher and one for the disposer. And I've got the dishwasher line hooked up right there. And I'm still waiting. Uh, the countertops could be anywhere from four to six weeks, uh, even longer. So until those get here, uh, I'm not going to have a sink. So potentially month to two months without a sink but uh, just 10 feet away in the laundry room I've got a sink there so uh, that's the situation with lights I put seven puck lights as I kind of showed you before uh, and I haven't done my cable management but when I first flicked the switch uh, it took a second for these lights to come on and it, I was a little bit worried I did it wrong but there's switch and there's the lights so it takes a second for the power transformer to transform the power and get the 12 volts. So I think it does a pretty good job. I'm going to turn this off again and on. Pretty good job for task lighting on a countertop, especially in this corner where uh, light doesn't reach so well. Um, so here I've got two lights there, two lights there. 
a single light under this cabinet and two lights in this corner. So seven lights is 28 watts um, and I've got room for expansion. So that's it on the lighting and the appliances. Oh, and I did change the uh, fixtures up here. They were incandescent 75 watt bulbs and I uh, replaced those with LED. The stuff that they included like this to have the LED fixture stay in the pan up there did not work. And so I ended up just using uh, caulk to caulk those in. And I'm okay with that. It just means that I, if they go bad, which they're LED, so they shouldn't go bad. But if they do, I just have to cut the caulk around the perimeter and then take those out. And you can see I tried to fix a couple of these nail holes. And so the paint over the joint compound uh, has a different sheen to it. So I need to recoat the ceiling uh, in these places where I've fixed it. Anyway, I'm really happy with how these lights came out and I like the color. Uh, next up, hopefully, will be countertops. I could add the, I did get a valence kind of that goes on here and I'm still debating in my head whether to install it or not. Anyway, hopefully you'll see countertops and then backsplash next.